Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair's Artist Open Call Information Session with Jack Bullen, who is Director of Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair. Jack will be introducing this year's International Artist Open Call, talking about our new opportunities and the application process and an informal Q&A. Just a reminder that the deadline for applications is on the 26th of May 2024 and more information can be found on our website. I'll drop that into um, the box down below. If you've got any questions as Jack is speaking, please put them in the Q&A box. The session will be recorded and made available on our website. Thank you so much. So I'll hand over to Jack now. Thank you very much, Olivia. Um, thank you very much everyone else for joining me. Um, I thought I'd just start by giving a very quick um, lowdown on uh, the fair and then uh, the changes we've made to the application process before opening it out to everyone's questions. So uh, very excitingly, Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair is in its ninth year this year. Uh, it was originally set up to uh, provide a platform for independent artists working in the medium of print. Um, Unique to our fair is that we run a, um, a unique model that is 50% of the fair is dedicated to galleries, and then the 50% is to artists who apply through the open call. So what we feel about this is it creates a really nice synergy um, between the galleries and the independent artists, and there's lots of opportunities um, for artists to um, get gallery representation or just sort of show on a, on a, on a larger scale. Uh, that the fair provides. Um, we have made a few changes this year to the application process because we've realized that in the past, uh, given the size restrictions of the fair, I mean, it is a large fair, but there are um, obviously as a physical entity, you, you are limited by the, the space. So um, we've, we've decided to operate a two-step process this year. So there will be the first half of the application uh, or the uh, selection, should I say, um, we'll look at shortlisting artists as happens at the summer exhibition, uh, the Royal Academy. So um, that will be stage number one. And anybody who is selected to, um, or selected to be or shortlisted, the, um, the worst case scenario in that, uh, in that instance is that you will be selected for the director's cut. So the director's cut is an online exhibition over the summer um, where the work will be available uh, for sale online. Um, it's something that we're looking to really um, expand on. We ran it last year and it was really successful. And so we're going to expand on that this year. And uh, we hope that provides more opportunities for artists applying uh, that we haven't had in previous years. Um, if you are lucky enough to be selected for the, um, the main fair, then uh, you will continue as normal in the previous years. So the second stage is, um, so the first stage you'll be shortlisted. Uh, and I think there will be about 800 to 1,000 works overall shortlisted. And it is judged on a piece by piece basis. And then from that moment on, there'll be another online selection process, uh, which will be done in-house with our entire staff, um, director, uh, myself, the uh, two directors, and then one or two of the judges, but not all of the judges who would have done the previous shortlisting. Um, that is then um, taken, all their, all their choices are taken on board, and then we will then make the final decision for the main fair. Um, lastly, the, um, the only other addition that we've done uh, this year is we're launching the art trail. So uh, this is for artists who apply with works that are um, that are, are very large in scale that we uh, potentially haven't been able to accommodate in the past. So we have in, in previous years had artworks that are sort of seven meters in length. And so as you can imagine with size restrictions that um, that's, um, means it has been unlikely that that has, would have got through in the past. What we've done this year is we're going to expand outside of the fair. So uh, we're working with partnering venues uh, in the local area um, and in other spaces within the building to show some large scale 3D or even 2D works 
uh, that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to do previously. Um, this will run from the 14th of November through to the 24th of November. So it will be uh, open for an extra week um, and will be open to the public. So it should be really exciting. Um, other than that, I think it's um, best if I just open it up to the floor and you can ask me any questions and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Amazing. Thanks, Jack, for the introduction. So we had a couple of questions that came through um, prior to the webinar. Um, so the first question is uh, from an artist who says, I create monotype prints in black and white. I then scan them onto the computer and color them in Photoshop. So I create digital images that I want to then sell as limited ed edition G clay prints. Would this fulfill the requirements for the artist open call? <laughs> A nice easy one to get going. Um, <laughs> so I think, um, I think, uh, so we, um, we don't accept um, reproductions, but I think in this case, it sounds like that the artwork uh, is being altered. So, the, so the, the mono print in black and white is then being changed to a colored edition, um, which would mean that there is no, it's not a reproduction. Those are, those are color prints. Um, and so I think those would be acceptable in this instance. Where they wouldn't be acceptable is if they were just merely a reproduction of that original monoprint without any uh, alteration. So they would therefore be uh, a reproduction print, if, the, if that makes sense. Great. And another question, um, are all the first and second selections made online? I think they're, they're referring to the two part selection process i.e. all physical artworks received are to hang, or is there a final in-person selection then, and then collection of unselected work? Yeah, no, um, both processes uh, or both selections are done online. Um, otherwise, we're asking a huge amount for people to come and physically travel from abroad or across the country to um, show their works in person. So we think it's fairer, um, although not always ideal, but it is fairer to have um, both, uh, both steps uh, online. Perfect. And if selected, do you prefer artists to frame with anti-reflective glass? Um, well, I think it's down to the artist. I mean, you know, um, as with everything, it um, comes down to price and all these sort of things. So, you know, yes, in an in a ideal situation, if you um, feel that, that, um, that that's not going to um, uh, break the bank for you as the artist, then, of course, I think that's the, you know, they are, it is the best form of glass. But, um, you know, there, there's considerations to take in as well with, say, your pricing of your work, because I think it's, always um, important not to have the frame uh, more expensive than the artwork, so it w would depend. But I, I think, yes, that um, in an ideal situation, um, the better quality glass, the, the better. And what do you advise for unestablished artists on how to price their work? So with the cost of framing and commission and transport, it's easy to end up putting a price tag on something that be, might be higher than the buyer would expect for an artist who is, in their words, unknown. Yeah, so pricing um, is uh, not an exact uh, science. It's, um, it's an art form in itself, I think. Um, so I think the, the, the key is to take in uh, a, range of, um, a range of factors. So I think understanding where you as an artist are, are priced um, already. So if you have other works that you have sold previously, I think that is a really good rate to go on. Um, you, you know, I think it's always better to start at a lower price where you are comfortable and feel comfortable and know that you can make those sales and therefore then increase your price at a later point. So you're, so you're sort of building your, um, you're building your price as you as you um, progress in your career. Um, there's there's nothing worse than sort of putting a, a really high price on there and then not getting any bites in terms of sales and then not actually knowing whether that's to do with the artwork, how you've priced it, uh, marketing, anything like that. So I think it's always better to start at the lower point as long as you're comfortable with that 
and you're not losing money, obviously, in the production, and then increasing. Uh, in terms of um, in terms of prints, there's obviously the uh, the added uh, complication in terms of um, the size of the edition and things like that. So I think um, obviously if you have a much greater size, then then um, uh, it's going to be uh, less. I, I would price it cheaper than obviously if you have a limited run. Um, and then finally, you've just got to then work out. Uh, obviously, your studio costs, uh, the materials, all that sort of thing, your time to a degree um, in terms of how um, how you price that. So I can't give you an exact, um, I can't give you anything exact, but I, I can, in terms of actual figures, I would say on average, uh, within the curated hang, the average price is somewhere between uh, 300 to 600 pounds, if that, if that helps. Brilliant. And we've got another question here that says, I'm thinking of applying from abroad. Does the work need to be framed? Uh, yes, we do ask that all work is framed. However, um, there's, there's a couple of um, things we, uh, we can do to help here. So we run uh, Woolwich Contemporary Framing, which means that you can send the work unframed from abroad to our framers and there's an upfront uh, quote within the application form already, so you will so you will have an idea of what that costs. Um, so that will help, uh, I, um, or it's intended to help you get um, send it nice and cheaply, and then once it gets to the framers, we will frame it at a very, very uh, well as competitive as we can make it, uh, and then we will deliver it to the fair for free. So once it's been sent to the framers, you don't have to worry there. Um, there is some cases where the work doesn't have to be framed, but that is down to the fact of you as the artist, how you've intended the work to be curated. Um, what has to happen is it has to be in a state that it can be, the buyer can take it from the wall and hang it in their, um, in their house uh, if it's purchased. So we don't uh, accept works hung with say magnets uh, unless they're kind of a large scale installation. So there are a few exceptions we've had when say some artists have, have handed us something that is about five you know uh what did we have a piece last year that which was about 25 individual panels that were um sort of three meters by two meters high so we do make exceptions in, in that case but um you know we do ask all work to be framed um the final thing if you are applying from abroad we do have um we understand that it is actually really, uh, it can be complicated to get the works over. And so there is an option to just apply for just online only. So um, we want to be um, as inclusive as, as we can and as, as global in our reach. So uh, there is that option if you feel that sending from abroad isn't, um, isn't possible for you. Great. And this question is, is touching on the exceptions around uh, framing and we've got a question here that says is it possible to send you unfra unframed prints for an unframed installation uh, yes so um, as I said we have previously in the past had uh, installations that are unframed um, so yes that would be acceptable we also have in some cases um, artists have like mounted the unframed piece onto like a board and there's a, there's a sort of hanging system behind. So whether it be some battens behind um, and then it's yeah, directly mounted to a board, that would be acceptable. So you could, you know, it doesn't have to be framed in that, in that degree, but um, as I say, it has to be, um, has to be able to be hung on a wall if, if it's um, purchased or in the case of an installation, it has to kind of, we would have to make a judgment call whether we felt that that was, uh, it was unreasonable to try and get that framed, if that makes sense, because of the scale. Brilliant. And we've got another question here, which is, what are you looking for when you're choosing work at the fair? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I, I think the first thing to start off by saying is that um, uh, we have a panel of 14 judges. So uh, every, every judge will be looking for something slightly different. Um, and um, you know it's down to those uh, those individual judges' kind of tastes, or they will have um, different uh, emphasis. I, I know, for instance, that Tolo Deku has written a really interesting piece um, 
on his um, on his top tip about he he's very much into say the narrative behind things. So I think he was advising about um, about uh, drawing that out in in the um, title and things like that. So I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for myself. Um, in this regard. I mean, I, I'm quite uh, eclectic in my in, in how what I look. I, there's nothing I really look for. I don't choose a particular theme or interest. You know, I I like to see artists that are pushing the boundaries of print. Equally, I love to see really beautiful, um, well, uh, you know, beautifully drawn pieces that are that are say more traditional in their in their tastes. Um, I think it's just. Uh, when you get looking through the works, it just kind of tends to be a gut instinct whether I like that piece or not, personally, or whether I think it's doing something really interesting uh, that I think would be worth consideration in the fair. Great. And we've got an artist here who is um, in, an international artist. They're based in Canada. Do they need to be registered for UK VAT sales tax, VAT? <laughs> No, I don't think they do. So um, you you would be exempt uh, VAT. I, I, I mean, it, it will depend whether I think you are um, VAT registered yourself. I, I would have to um, double check this. <laughs> um, but I think no. You you if you're not VAT registered, uh, then um, then you don't have to you, you you don't have to in the UK. So effectively, um, effectively, you are selling directly to the client. And then we would be charging you, um, we are VAT registered, so we would be charging you uh, VAT on our commission, but you would then as an international artist be able to claim that back, I believe. Great. And um, we've got a question here about um, acceptable processes. So is photography accepted? Yeah, um, it's not something we, um, shout about massively only because there are so many fairs that are actually dedicated solely to photography but in in the sense that a print is uh, an image that has been transferred from one surface to another or um or uh yeah then photography certainly is um is is included so yeah the only thing we don't accept as i say is is a reproduction print of an original work so if it was a if it's a copy of a painting um, just a photograph of a painting, then we wouldn't accept that because it's not an original. But if it's a photograph, you know, original photograph in its own right, then yes, of course. And we've got a follow up question from that saying, so could a series of photographs that are intended but not yet in the photopolymer process, which are so a work in progress, be submitted? Yes, yeah, so so we do have um, we have in the past accepted um, uh, works that are in, uh, submitted uh, in progress. Um, we've added um, sections to the application form where you can write notes. Um, so you say that it is an application in progress. Uh, sorry, um, not an application in progress. A uh, work in progress. Um, and yeah, you, you know, there, there's there's the ability to mark all of this down as you go ahead. But as I say, in the past, we have accepted works that have been uh, um, uh, in progress. So there's no reason why you can. Great. And we've got a question here um, saying that uh, this artist would like to submit some silkscreen prints to the fair. Some of their designs might be exhibited in some other galleries and then in brackets in a different country at the same time. Is that an option or should I make sure that the prints I submit won't be shown anywhere else during the duration of the fair? No, I, I think, yeah, these, all these, um, this all gets, gets tricky. That's not, that's not a problem. Um, again, in the, in the application program, uh, process, you can, you'd have to list uh, the size of the edition, obviously, and then, you can say how many of those editions you would like to uh, provide for us for sale. So uh, in this case, say you wanted to say you had an edition of 20, you could say, right, I'm going to give 10 to the um, gallery uh, abroad, and then I will give 10 to the fair. So um, as long as that was stuck to, so we know what we have available to sell, um, then, then that's, that's fine. And another question, if, 
uh, if I have a series that all goes together, can that be considered as one piece for the submission? Um, so I think in this case, uh, yes, it can. I, I think the, the issue is when it, um, if it is to be sold together or sold separately, um, it, it will, it's difficult to kind of answer this question without um, seeing the work because we do try and do try to kind of, you know, obviously the application is is designed, you know, to, to accommodate as many people as we can, but obviously there are, there can be exceptions, you know, otherwise you're making the form so complicated for people to, to try and to, um, to fill out if you're trying to um, work at every eventuality. But um, yeah, I, I think how I would how I would think in my head would be that you would, uh, if the work is to be sold as a series as one, that could be submitted as one application. Um, otherwise, I think you could submit the works uh, individually, but then write in the notes that you would like this to be considered as one piece to be hung together, if that makes sense. We can, uh, I think if, um, if, if this particular um, person would like to, to email through, we can have a look and advise on that separately. Great. Um, so they would email info at woolwichprintfair.com. Um, yeah. And so uh, we have another question here asking, do you have a partnership with a shipping company? Uh, yes, so this year we're working with, um, uh, with Pack and Send. Um, and they uh, they have um, uh, spaces all over the world, so um, so they're they're really good. We've used them for the last couple of years. Um, they store the works, um, and yeah, they, they they get everywhere. What's great with them, they have a um, relationship with DHL, which means that uh, you can take the work to any DHL store, and they'll they'll do it. But they they can pick it up from there. Um, equally, they can come to your house or studio and pick it up from there. So uh, they will be, there's information about our shipping partners on the website and they will provide upfront uh, quotes for you. Brilliant. Um, and we have another question here, similar to um, the question around shipping. So um, if you get works framed through Woolwich Contemporary Framing, how does the work get returned after the exhibition, for example, to Dublin? Do they have to be collected? No, so we can send those works back. So um, in previous years, um, we've had us uh, arrange it themselves, but this year, because we have now got an official partnership with Pack and Send, if the works are not collected, uh, we will then take it straight to Pack and Send, who will then liaise with the artists and, and arrange shipping. So th there's a range of options at the end of the fair if you are applying from abroad um, uh, that um, that you can take up. So you either Pack and Send can do it. Uh, they will store it anyway for us. So if uh, so, you can make alternative arrangements if you feel you have um, you know cheaper options. Um, but these guys are very competitive in their uh, costs. So I would hope that we've found you the best option already. Um, or you could get a friend to pick it up or how ha have you wish. So we try and make it as easy for you as possible. Um, but yeah, it, it, it can be um, a challenge at the end. Brilliant. Um, and a question here saying, can you give tips on photographing work for the selection process? Um, I think the key is to um, try and eliminate all shadows, obviously. So, um, uh, I, um, I think what the, the, be the best images are the ones that encompass the entire pic uh, the entire um, uh, pe the, the media um, uh, if, if, if they're if they're particularly sort of if there's a big difference I think otherwise you can cut, um, cut right back into the image if if it's only like a thin layer around I think I think the what can be a struggle is if you see just the say the plate size and it's kind of you know a small piece in a massive picture I think that we'd like to see uh, how that comes across um, but I think the the key is not not to have somebody holding it up I think is, is always always the challenge and then getting obviously shadows cutting across the work so just try and get it in a well-lit room 
um, and try and eliminate all shadows on the works and then photograph that. Great. And we've got another question asking, are G clay prints acceptable? So yeah, just going um, back to what I previously said. So if they are, um, if they are just uh, reproductions of an original work, uh, which I would say on the whole, a lot of gclays are, but not 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 always. Um, so if a gclay is a, it's a reproduction of an original, um, say painting, for instance, then no, that would not be acceptable. But if it is an original in its own right, so it's been manipulated uh, or created digitally and then printed out by gclay, that is not a problem. We don't mind that at all. We, in fact, we certainly encourage it. Great. And we've got a few questions about the commission. So how much the commission is and also the, how it excludes framing as well. Yeah, so commission is um, is set at 40%. Um, and so, but that is only taken on the uh, price of the unframed work. So we obviously we know that you as an artist are, um, you, you know, you're, you're having to pay for the frame. And so we don't take commission on the frame. Um, so you would effectively, when you apply to the fair, you let us know what the um, what the cost of the unframed piece is. And then you have to let us know what the cost of the frame is. There will be a quote for Woolwich Contemporary Framing there to help you with that. Um, and then within the application process, we actually will give you a, a breakdown of what we would take and what you would receive as the artist on the unframed piece. So. Uh, you can then uh, make your calculations accordingly if you would like to make it slightly more expensive to cover some of those costs or, or however. So it's 40%, uh, oh yeah, sorry, 40% plus VAT. So obviously if you're VAT registered, you can claim that back. If not, you'll have to take that into consideration. So it would work out to be, I think, 48% overall. Great. And um, a question here, how much is an artist's online presence? So I suppose like maybe followers, things like that. Um, and the artist statement taken into consideration when the selection process is made. Okay, so in terms of the size of your following, say your online presence, none of that's taken into consideration. Um, so the judges will see um, the image, um, the title of the work, the uh, discipline, um, and then there will be uh, the tags that we associate with the work, and then the um, uh, the tagline that uh, that we introduced last year. So, um, so that's what the judge will immediately see um, because it's it's trying to get a balance for people to see, give as much information as we can, uh, so the judges can make as an informed decision as possible, but also not. Um, not like overwhelm them, so it's impossible to actually get through the uh, the applications. Um, however, if if uh, say a judge uh, particularly likes or finds the work interesting, uh, um, they want to read more, they can click on the work, and then obviously the, all all the extra information, um, well actually the, the the full artist statement will then come up. So that's um, that's kind of that. We don't take anything uh, other than that into account. Um, so it doesn't matter. So we ask for a lot of things like social media accounts and things like that, but that's uh, just to help us out um, later on. So we're not coming back and asking you again and again and again for other, for more information if, if successful. And do you accept mixed media works that are a combination of this person's done the example of painting and digital print, but I assume they mean like a mixed media work, so a non printmaking artwork that is combined with a printmaking technique. Yeah, if it's um, if it has a printmaking technique is used in the um, in the work, then yes, that so we would we would consider that acceptable. In fact, we, we we like to see artists who are kind of pushing the boundaries of the medium, so using other um, using other other forms is definitely encouraged. And. Um, there's a question here. Um, could I please ask a related question on additions? I tend to work with variable additions and they put in brackets with different colors. So what is the best way to submit these if I'm making a number of edition prints available? 
That is, if they're going in a browser, would you need images of the color variations, et cetera? Yeah, so uh, I think um, I think in, in this case, you would want to put the, the work, the, 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 um, the piece that you, of that varied edition, the piece that you think is best, because obviously we're only as a judge going to be able to see one image. So I would get the one that you think is best, and that's the piece that we would like to be framed. Um, obviously, you can put all of this down. So, so um, as I say, I think the open call has been going for uh, eight years now. So we have sort of refined the process. So you can write down, it has the ability to put varied additions into the system. Um, and then if we were to see that, if you were successful, we would then ask you at that point if you could provide us with the color variations uh, for online sales and things like that. And will you favor additions over unique works? No, I think um, as with everything, it's trying to get the balance between everything. So uh, it's, it's, we obviously want to have um, additions and unique works. Um, so yeah, that's not really ever taken into account. I, I, I don't think I, um, when, I'm, when I'm judging, I, I don't think I've ever taken that into account. And um, this person here says, my work is long and would benefit from close-up photographs illustrating the details. How many photographs are acceptable per entry? And is the price the same as before? I think they mean from last year. Yeah, so um, the price is, uh, is, is, has remained the same as last year. Um, I, think, um, I think we added in last year, if you were, had previously been unsuccessful, um, then uh, our system will pick that up and actually give you a five uh, pound discount. Um, but um, in terms of uh, in terms of photographing, we, we really only have one. Um, we, we can really only accept one image um, when you think that there might be, say, a minimum of a minimum of ten thousand applications uh, sorry, or artworks to, to to look through. You know, we are. Um, you're asking for quite a lot if everyone's then suddenly putting in two or three per work. So I think if the, if the piece is, is exceptionally long, that it's not going to be come up uh, as an image, I think you can maybe email us and we'll, we'll look at putting some extra um, images into the process for, for that uh, as a one-off. But it will, it will have to make a, um, a call when we, see, when we see each case by case basis. And we've got um, a question here back to framing, um, should we ask the framers about price before, an up, before applying to the open call um, so that we can put the final price to include framing in our application? Or should we apply first, then ask for the framing price if selected? <clears throat> I, I, think it's, I think it's up to you. Um, so we, as I say, Woolwich Contemporary Framing will give you a bog standard quote um, at the time that you apply. So if you put in, say you, you put in the media dimensions and then it will give you a, a quote. So you can then use that in your application if you wish. Um, if successful, you have the ability to change pretty much anything on the application other than say the image. Um, so if you if you feel that, you know, you, you've created a, um, so you, you put the framing in much too cheap and you go afterwards and you find that the, the price is significantly more than you thought it was, you can then make that change at a later date um, once successful. So, you know, I, I say it's, it's totally up to you. And when providing an edition, is only one framed or do all the prints in that edition have to be framed? No, no, no. So just the piece that is uh, going to be hung on the wall needs to be framed. So everything else. So we ask for one framed work to hang on the wall, and one framed, uh, sorry, one browser uh, print uh, for, for the browser. Um, after that point, if, if say you were to make um, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth sale, um, then we would contact you directly, send you the, um, the packaging, uh, and then you you would put the work uh, the extra editions in the packaging and then send off to the client. Will the judges 
the panel get to see the size of the piece during the judging process? Sorry, yes, I should have put, yeah, the size will be included um, uh, when they, um, uh, sorry, the judges will see the size. Um, if I'm honest, I don't really, I haven't really ever taken the size massively into consideration when I'm looking through the works. Um, it's always kind of difficult to, to kind of get, get a sense, you know, even, even with the size available there, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to really have an idea of what, um, of how that affects the work. So I, I don't think it's anything to worry about, but yes, they will see the size. Do galleries attend the fair who are looking for new work, new artists? Yes, yeah, so there's been a there's been a number of galleries have taken on um, work. Uh, <coughs> sorry, yes, there's been a number of galleries that have um, taken artists from the curated hang. Um, uh, I can name sort of three or four four examples of artists who actually will be showing this year who originally showed at the fair um, sort of four, five, six years ago. Um, who are now solely represented by that gallery and will be showing at the fair no longer as part of the curated hang, but as part of the gallery coming along. Great. And for installation artworks and applications for installations, how does that work? Can we send a proposal with images of works if the installation is un under progress? Yeah, so this is actually again built into the system. So when you apply, you will be asked whether the work is to be hung uh, on the wall, uh, as in a 2D image, sorry, or whether um, or whether it's uh, an installation or say 3D 3D work. So, um, <clears throat> and how you select, how, what, what you decide will, will then change the application form slightly. So, uh, if you are applying uh, with an installation then you, it will go that route and you'll have the ability to put the dimensions down, obviously in 3D form. Uh, there's more note sections um, and installation requirements and things like that. So um, it is all done through the application uh, process. And this question here um, is asking, why did we change the selection process this year? Do you mean from a, a, a single to single I assume process? I they to... mean, yeah, this, the, the double, and then also maybe with the director's cut as well in there. Yeah, I think it's just because we're looking to give um, uh, artists and printmakers, uh, um, you know, the, the kind of the most, we're, we're looking to help, um, you know, give the, give the best sort of platform. So I think, you know, every year we were just, I became more increasingly aware that there were so many fantastic, um, artists and artworks that just that just weren't getting in because we were limited to the size. So this way, by having a two-step process, means that we can make more out of the director's cut, provide that as an extra um, opportunity uh, that, in its own right, that we hope over the over the next couple of years will build and build and build. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think it's just 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 the ability to kind of you know um, give give people more of an opportunity to, to sort of, you know, and more recognition as well. Great. And we, th there's two parts to this question and we've answered the first part, um, which they've just asked if a piece is created by collaging handmade prints onto a solid support, is that acceptable? You've said that anything that involves the printmaking process is, is a valid um, submission, but their question then, for the second part is is it acceptable in a float frame rather than under glass yeah yeah um if you if you um i think sometimes uh you know uh one of the so say stigmas uh on printmaking has been that kind of barrier that the glass um can can do uh so it can, it can create this sort of barrier to the uh, to the artwork that say um a canvas, um, an oil on canvas is, uh, doesn't have. Um, however, you know, I know there are some artists, um, Jake Garfield, for instance, is, uh, he, he frames all his works uh, without glass. Um, and I think there's something really lovely about that in terms of, uh, you know, you as the viewer getting to see the sort of, um, the, uh, 
the texture within the print. So yeah, you know, if you you don't have to include glass by any means. And we've got um, a question here about, uh, we've had, actually, this is a couple of questions. Um, is it acceptable to scan your artwork as opposed to photographing it for the submission process? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if um, I think, you know, the key is just to provide what you think is the, um, uh, the best image possible. Obviously, the image is the main thing that the, that the judges will see. So, you know, whether, whether that's photographed or scanned or what other, uh, uh, whatever other uh, way it is, I, I, I don't know whether it's a digital um, uh, file that you have. Um, I think, you know, whatever you think is, is, is going to give you the best shot uh, is what I would go for. Brilliant. And um, we've got a question here about the fair in general. They're asking who attends and who is the average buyer? Oh, well, I mean, it's it's a real mix, mix of people. So I, I suppose, you know, um, we're expecting 15,000 people um, in person. Um, there's significantly more um, online. Um, we actually partner with Artsy. So there's a sort of real um, uh, global uh, reach in terms of buyers. Um, it's a, it's a real mix of people uh, who, who come to the fair. So we have, um, we're launching actually our uh, a VIP lounge um, this year, which, so we we have a big um, database of some sort of really, um, uh, really amazing um, collectors um, who, you know, who like buy for um, uh, both investment and, um, things like that, all the way down to people who uh, are turning up with their children, who um, are looking to buy, you know, have just moved into um, their their first property and looking to um, kind of move on from posters or something, and you know, filling uh, their house with some some original work. So uh, it's it's a real mix, and I think that's what we like about the fair as well is that there's you know there's a sort of energy. Um, we, we like to think that it's um, all lacking in any form of pretension and people sort of feel comfortable there. So, you know, there is a real mix of people, but, you know, certainly culturally engaged people. Um, I'd say the sort of average age is kind of sort of in their sort of 30s, 40s. Um, yeah, I hope that, hope that kind of covers that question. Enough. It's a real buzz, the fair, <laughs> if they haven't <laughs> attended before. Um, so we've got a question here about artwork collection points. So will there be a collection point from Dublin or Belfast this year? So there's definitely one from Belfast. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so you can see all the collection points should be up online uh, on the um, uh, on that section of the website, drop of points. Um, I will just add to that that uh, this also depends on um, it does depend on uh, what people are looking for. So for instance, if we, um, those those ones that we have on the website are the ones that are confirmed, we will definitely have. So even if one person is dropping off it, um, somewhere, then we will we will pick up from that, from that particular point. However, if there are places, if we notice suddenly that we there's a huge rush of applications from Dublin or, Dundee or Aberdeen, then we will look to add those to um, to our collections. It's just at the moment that we, uh, you know, it's kind of like chicken and egg scenario. So uh, I think um, I think if we if we see that there are a lot of applications from a particular area that we feel could benefit from having a drop off, we will then add that to the list. Great, and we've got a question here about the online edition. So is that going ahead this year? Will you continue to put successful applicants work online? Uh, yes, so um, we're not altering the format there in any way. I think it's been, it's been a successful format. I think we just uh, will just try to make what we have better. So we partnered with Artsy um, and uh, that was actually really successful last year. Um, and then, so we'll continue to build on that partnership. And then um, we're just transform slowly transforming the website to see if we can just kind of um, 
you know, make it more um, user friendly and, and how we can sort of um, give more of a profile for each of our artists and artworks. And um, if the print is mounted on a board or canvas, does it need to also be framed? I think people are just asking around that, that sort of the nuance <clears throat> of framing. Um, I think I think the key thing is to say that, like, I, th I feel that the you need the frame. The frame is really important to uh, the presentation of a work. So I think um, I think it comes down to you and your intentions as an artist for the piece. So if you feel that uh, you know, if you really don't want it framed because you feel that that would undermine how the work is seen, then I think that that would um, we we wouldn't we obviously wouldn't ask for that to be framed. But I think um, I think it's you to take take a judgment on really. You know, we do encourage everything you know, to be framed, um, but you know, also I understand that there's some really interesting ways that pieces can be framed that might add to the piece and all that sort of thing. So, number one, I think we would like it just we would like it so that the buyer can see that on the wall and then see it in their their home. They don't have to do anything other than purchase the piece at the fair and then take it to the to the um, back home and hang it on the wall. Um, and then secondly, you know, yes, uh, uh, it needs to not distract. Um, it needs to sort of support the artwork itself. So uh, obviously I don't want anyone to feel that they have to go to uh, the expense of framing something if it's actually going to detract from the artwork. So it's a kind of, um, you, you, I think you as an artist would have to take a judgment on that. Does that, I hope that, yeah, I mean, I can obviously have another go at rewording that if you suddenly get a whole load of more, more questions on that, on that theme. No, I think, yeah, no, I think that answers it. Um, it's, it's about what is integral to the artwork, I suppose, yeah. and, and how that's conceived and if, if it is conceived as a framed piece or not. Um, but we would, yeah, expect them to be framed most likely. Um, in, in line with the framing, with the Woolwich Contemporary framing, there's a person who's asked if we're using FSC certified wood. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I believe so. You'll have to, um, sorry, that's, uh, that's one kind of left field uh, question. Um, I think, I think, I believe they, they are. You'll have to check on the website. We have listed, um, we have listed our frames on, uh, on the website under Woolwich Contemporary Framing. Um, and, you know, I know they're all from Larson Jewel, uh, which are a, a pretty um, respectable source there. Um, I think they are. I would just note that the, the idea of Woolwich Contemporary Framing is that it is a kind of, uh, it, it's, it's meant to be, as, you know, we're, we're trying to support artists. And so we under, I appreciate that framing is a, can be an expense so we have tried to go out to find the the most sort of cost effective option so if you are looking for framing to a particular standard like sorry it's all going to be really really good framing but if you want to have a sort of um certain type of wood or like a sort of you know i don't know cherry or uh you know and you want the corners done um in certain ways and I think you, you you can look elsewhere. We have a brilliant partner called um, the the Framing Room uh, down in Broccoli who do exquisite uh, pieces, and they are actually uh, have a stand at the fair. But um, in terms of what you can do with framing, we give you the options basically three uh, options of frame: black, white, and uh, sorry, actually I think four. There's two wood effects that you can go for, so sort of like a walnut effect and a sort of oak effect. Um, but it's only really those four options. And then you can ch choose in terms of like um, glass, uh, the type of glass, art glass or uh, standard. And then you've got the different variations on um, mounting. But uh, it is meant to be just a, a way that's cost effective to you as the artist um, and, also, um, and also just really good quality as well. And for the application process, should the photograph of the artwork include the frame or is it best just to show the artwork itself? Um, yeah, so uh, no, I don't think it needs to include the frame. Um, 
Uh, in fact, I think if you can try and get the work photographed uh, before you can frame it, because obviously the glass will create glare and things like that. So if you can try and take, uh, take a picture um, unframed, that is best. I'm going to slightly um, contradict what I said earlier. Um, I think, yeah, uh, trying to take uh, an image of, uh, of the image rather than the whole paper, actually, like I said earlier, because I think um, now I think about it a little more. Obviously, um, the work is going to be reduced to the size of a um, sort of a laptop or something. So I think, you know, if you, you want to get as close to the image as possible. And how long does the artwork stay on Artsy? And I suppose how long is the online edition as well? Um, this person has noticed that on Artsy, there is some artwork still on there from our fairs from previous years. Um, so it's just a question about time duration, things like that. Yeah, so um, uh, the online edition runs, uh, and Olivia, you might have to help me out here, um, but I think the edition runs from the uh, 20th of November to the 1st of December, am I right? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, um, yes, to the yes. Sunday, the 1st of December. Yeah, it's so, a week so after the fair finishes, it continues online. Yeah, it, yeah, so um, so that will, um, and that's the same as we've done the last, I think, three years, um, certainly since COVID. Um, and I think we think that works really well because it's long enough that you can get some more, um, uh, so you, you still got, so you basically are, are keeping interest uh, high during that period. You can sustain that amount of interest over an extra week when it gets to two weeks it starts to, to dip in the middle and it can be quite difficult to maintain. So uh, we think a week is a really, uh, a really good uh, length of time uh, that people are interested. Um, but yes, it does stay up on Artsy. So um, artists have in the past requested this is taken down. Um, and uh, We've done that, but I think as standard Artsy tend to have them up as like a sort of catalog. Um, so, you know, um, from how I see it, um, I think it's just good for you as an artist to have your work um, available to to collect to collectors. Obviously, it's not we're not assuming that it is still available for sale, um, uh, and nor is nor really is the collector. I think they just get to see your work, um, and it just remains up there as a as a catalogue of that of that year. But then again, you know, it's then advertised for you as the artist. So, you know, we would hope that you know maybe in a six months to a year or two, three years, you know, somebody will be having a look along that catalog and think, gosh, I really love that artist. I wonder what they're producing now and then go have a look. So, so if you have, a, have an issue with um, your work remaining up on Artsy after that period, you can let us know, we can take it down. But um, as well, I do, do think it's, it's good for you. Amazing. So that's the end of our questions. Um, we've come to the yeah. end. <laughs> so we thank you so much um, to everyone who joined us uh, for today's session. As I mentioned earlier, the session will be recorded and made available on our website. Um, the deadline for applications is the 26th of May 2024. We do have a dedicated FAQ section on the website as well, which we try to update regularly with any questions and queries that come through. Um, but we hope to see your applications and thank you so much. And thanks, Jack, for, for doing that. No, no, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. -bye. Bye.